Hi guys, uh, I'm in the workshop. The heater is still in the workshop on the bed slash up, not in my camper van. But uh, it's a freaking heat wave out there. Why would I want to put it in the camper van when I can play with it in here? So I put a, a video up on the group. It was uh, what to expect the first time you press the go button. And I ran the heater from priming to right way up, right way down, full cycle. So people could see exactly what to expect the first time they fired up. Uh, why doesn't that pump kick in as soon as you press the go button? Why does it wait? How the cool down cycle works, all that sort of thing. A lot of good reviews come out of that, good comments, it helped people, which is great because I got a light out of this group, gave me the confidence to buy the heater. Um, but a couple of comments came through is, great dude, but that's a simple rotary controller, I've got the LCD controller, it would be great if you could do something similar. So, being the insufferable boring nerd that I am, uh, I just simply said, which is Chinese for Abracadabra, and I've now got the LCD controller as well. <coughs> Okay, so what I'll do then is I'll show you how to set the clock, how to do a status check on the key parameters of the machine, how to prime it, you need to prime it, how to do that with the LCD controller, and then we'll just cycle up and down targeting a preset temperature so we can see how the thermostatic control kicks in and then a shutdown. So just like the rotary one, what to expect the first time you press the go button. Now I'm going to time lapse this, you haven't got to sit through a 15 minute video, I'll chop the middle bits out and so you just see the key bits. So let's go. Okay, so I've just put the fuse in and the LCD control is fired up. What you've got there is the time and we're going to set that now. So you press the settings button there and the digits start to flash. Now it's just like a setting an alarm clock, a digital alarm clock. So it's what, it's quarter past nine now in the evening now. So using the up button there, select two, press OK. Select the up button for one. Press OK. We're on the minutes now. We want to go to 15. So press OK. OK. Right now, let's move on to the next setting. So we're now jumping down to the next setting, which is a timer. You've got two preset timers. This is on timer one, and it's off. So if I press the up button, timer one is now engaged. Press the OK. And we can set the time exactly as we did on the clock. It's due to come on at the moment at 21.42. I'm going to OK through all of that. Now that's the off time, so it's due to go off again at 11.13 a.m. And I'll go through, go through all of that. Now you've got timer two. Again, you can set it off, on. I'm going to switch it off. Off, down for off, up for on, down for off. Click OK to that. Right, and then the last setting is the password. That's to get into the uh, the guts of the machine. Nerd zone zone. We're not going to play with that right now. So just let it flash a while and it'll jump back to the clock. OK, so we're on the time. That little alarm clock there shows you've got a preset time set. Now I'm going to turn it off because we want to fire up manually here, don't we? So what I'm going to do is press the settings button to jump over the time second one right and see preset timer number one is on want to turn it off press the down up button it's off okay to confirm it's jumped to timer two we're going to go okay over that to confirm again it's given the option to go into the nerd zone with a password we're not going to do that even though i've now got a password uh, we're not going to do that today and then it will jump back to the time Okay, so we can now do a quick status check. You press the OK button once. That's the temperature in the environment now. Look at that, 30 degrees in my workshop. Ridiculous heat wave. The thermistor that measures it is just underneath there, right where the wire comes out. Press it again. That is the target temperature you're going to set. Note it's a bolder font. So the big bad bold font is the one that you're setting at. Press it again. That's measuring your battery voltage. Notice the battery's green. We've got, got a good battery there. Press it again, that's your error code log. Press it again, you get back to time. So if you ever get an error code, look on the file section of the forum, you'll see what they mean. I'm always seeing people saying, what does E3 mean? What does E3 mean? And someone will say, it's the glow plug, but look on the files. Everything you need is in the forum. So, right, that's the status check. Okay, so you need to prime the machine, get the juice into the pipes before you kick off. Now, look, here's my pipe here. The other end's in the tub of paraffin. There's my level there. So you can see I've done most of it. 
I've left a bit so you can see what to do and this is what you do. So you press and hold the OK button and then press the down arrow and you see you get the H and the off flashing. You then press the up arrow and you can hear that pumps clicking and is in fact now priming. You see that level is going up there. Do, 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 do. Not far to go. Okay, as I said in the other video, um, when I first got this to get juice into the pipes quickly, I done a bit of fuel pipe fellatio. But if you're going to do that at home, be careful because paraffin used to be uh, a laxative back in the day. Okay, so right, and you just then plug this in into the bottom of the machine. And we're good to go. I should say I found these, these this machine tolerant to air, air pockets, as long as the air is moving through the pipe. If a little bit of air gets in there, it's in and gone. If you get an air lock and it's trapped, you're in trouble, you'll get an error code. So just make sure you not haven't got air trapped, but a little bit of air getting in is fine. I've got that much of a gap now. That's a, that's fine, I'll plug that in, that'll clear through. Okay, so let's do a fire up. Okay, let's uh, go for a fire up. So let's check the status again. Press the OK button. That's the current temperature. Second time you press it, it's the temperature you want. So it's the big one, the one with the big uh, degree signs, the one you want. And you can see there that the one we want is less than the current. So press the up button and I'm going to set it to 30 degrees. So it's one degree above what it is now. It's dropped back again. So we're ready to press the go button. By the way, you can adjust the temperature of the up and down buttons any time while the machine's going. You don't have to do it before you set off, uh, press the go button. So let's press the go button now. You see the on starts flashing, the animation starts, and you might just to be able to hear that fan going, but what you won't hear is the fuel pump. Now that confuses people to start with. The fuel pump does not kick in straight away. You've got a startup sequence to go through. But see the animations going here. You've got showing that hot air has been pumped out of the exhaust and cold air going in. A little bit of a gimmick that, but it's all jolly nice. Okay, you can just hear that pump now, yeah? Now you might have heard a little bit of a roar. It looks like the flame tube is firing up and a pump speeding up as well and I've got my hand in front of the heater and it's coming out with hot air now things are getting faster and as the body of the machine gets warmer you'll see those bars go up there and they'll go up and up to uh, as things get hotter right we're firing up now we're well underway all bars going now that heat exchanger is nice and hot I can feel that hair blasting out we should be up to temperature pretty soon. Okay, so I'm in my workshop, absolutely sweltering now. Ridiculous me to make this video in the heat wave. Wait for it to get up to 30 degrees. I've got quite a big workshop and it's quite a big number to aim for. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the temperature, the target temperature down to 29, which is what we're showing now. And that will run like that for a bit until it makes sure it's stable. It takes a while for it to, it doesn't uh, react immediately against the temperature, just to make sure it is an actual real temperature. Right, I don't know if you can hear, but the fan is starting to slow down. The pump is starting to slow down. I don't even hear the pump now. That's me clicking in synchronization to the pump. We've hit our temperature, so we've got to go into the maintenance mode now, maintaining temperature. Okay, so we've got a nice slow tick over on that pump now. You can see the animation slowed down a bit here. The machine's just ticking over just to keep the temperature up. So if you read on the forum, the guys who've, uh, who've used these a lot say it's a good idea to have a good burnout at full power five or ten minutes or so after you finish using the heater, just to burn out any soot that might have collected in there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ramp the temperature right the way up. Right, 
Right, so I've ramped the requirement up now to 35 degrees C. Um, and I've done that just so the machine kicks up to full power again so I can burn out all the, the crap and soot before I turn it off. And I'm gonna run that for sort of five, six, seven minutes or so, uh, and then we'll do a shutdown. Okay, so I'll be running out for uh, seven or eight minutes. Uh, let's do a shutdown. So we press and hold the power button, the on off button. Press and hold. And there you see it flashes off. And you'll see the glow plug symbols come back on because it's cutting the fuel out. You can hear the fan slowing down, but the glow plug comes back on to burn off any residuals that are in there when the flame tube is out. So you, the biggest draw on your battery is when you start up, glow plug comes on and we shut down, the glow plug comes on again. What I find fascinating or uh, strange is the pump keeps going for a little while after you turn it off, only, only sort of half a minute or so. You'll see that go out in a minute. And what you'll find is when that glow plug goes out, the fan speeds up a little bit just to purge any nasties out of there. There you go, glow plug's out. I don't know if you heard, that fan sped up a bit. And now that will just run and run and run until the thing cools down. You'll see these bars drop away, but I'm gonna fast forward all of this, otherwise it's like watching paint dry. We'll come back to it when it's in a near to its closed down state. Okay, and you can see now we're down to uh, four bars. Reds are gone. Down to three bars. So the message here, here is it takes a long time to cool down to so turn it off before you need it actually off. And we're now down to two bars. Not long from shutting down now. And there we have shut down. So there you go. Uh, what to expect the first time you press the go button on the LCD controller. I hope it's been of use and uh, good luck. And of course a massive shout out of respect for the admins who run this group. Uh, not an insignificant amount of work because every time something goes up people need it checked. Um, so great job they're doing. It's, it gave me the confidence to buy this machine and um, loving playing with it. Hope uh, the video is of use.